Hey everyone, it's been a long time since I made a video, but I think I might have found a new way that'll hopefully fix a lot of the issues that people were having with Restream and some of my other tutorials. This one is going to be using a piece of software called Jack Audio. Now during the time of this video, it looks like they have versions for Mac and Windows available. This video is primarily going to be showcasing the Windows setup, but it looks like both of them are on version 1.9.21. If we look at the version notes, it looks like they fixed some compatibility with Mac OS 12, which is Monterey. I will try my best to get my hands on a Mac computer, but as of right now, I do not have one. But as you can see, it looks like this version of Jack 2 was updated last month on April 14th of 2022. So the first thing you're going to want to download is the 64-bit installer for Jack Audio. Now Jack does have a small write-up on how to set it up with Windows in their FAQ section. If you scroll down to the bottom, they will show you how to install and configure Jack, as well as connecting audio applications through Jack Router. I'll leave all these links in the description just in case you want to read them for reference, but I'm going to walk you through everything step by step. The next thing you're going to want to download and install is OBS ASIO. Now I did showcase this plugin a while ago on my channel, but since then the developer has updated this quite a bit. As stated here, the JUCE and Base ASIO plugin have the most functionalities. Unfortunately, Base ASIO cannot be released by this developer due to legal purposes, but they did release the JUCE version, which has a lot of functionality as well. At the top of this page towards the right side, you'll see releases. Once you click on that, this version was released last year in April, but I found it still works quite well. If you scroll down a little bit, you're gonna wanna click on OBS ASIO installer 3.1.0.exe, and we will install this in addition to Jack Audio. Now, OBS ASIO was originally created to only capture audio inputs of your ASIO device, as stated here. Inputs would be something like your microphone or some sort of instrument plugged directly into your audio interface, which OBS ASIO helps you route into OBS. The developer does give a small piece of documentation which shows you how to capture mixes through Reaper using reroute. I've personally never used Reaper, but I will leave this link in the description as well for those of you that would like to try this. I believe this is going to work similarly to Jack Audio, in which we will utilize virtual ASIO audio drivers to route the output from our DAW back into an ASIO device as an input within OBS. It sounds a little confusing right now, but once I show you the graph in Jack Audio, it'll make a little more sense. Just as a side note, the developer from OBS ASIO did showcase a supported device page, which was updated around 25 days ago. And there are plenty of devices that do work and are quite stable with OBS ASIO. And if you scroll down towards the bottom, it will also show that the following virtual drivers are also working with OBS ASIO, including Jack Router, which is what I'm going to show you how to use right now. At the very bottom, there are a few audio interfaces that are not currently working. A very common one being the Universal Audio Apollo Twin USB. The developer did note for UAD devices, use the base ASIO version of the plugin, which cannot be released, so you'll have to compile it. As stated earlier, the developer cannot release the base ASIO plugin. So if you know a software engineer or maybe someone who knows how to compile code, they can help you compile the base ASIO version to work with your UAD devices. And again, I think this is specifically for inputs such as your mic or your instrument going directly into OBS. Although there may be a different way we could do that without needing to utilize the base ASIO version of the plugin. Now for this video, I am using a trial version of Ableton Live 11. Ableton Live is on version 11.1.5. Regarding my OBS version, I believe I am on the latest one as well, the 64-bit version of OBS 27.2.4. There is an official knowledge base article directly from Ableton showing you which applications are best to route audio between applications. If you scroll down, there's going to be a section called virtual audio routing, which is what we're going to be doing today. And again, they showcase Jack Audio for Windows and Mac as an option, as well as some other applications you have as alternatives. Now, once you have Jack 2 and OBS ASIO downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and install them. 
and run through the standard installation for each application. I already have both of these installed, so I won't need to go through the process again, but I'm just showing you the install windows so you know what to expect. Now there is one key component that you should install here. Make sure when you're going through the Jack 2 setup, you click this drop down and click full installation with Jack router, or you could just make sure everything is checked within this installation window. Now, before we start setting up any settings with an OBS or our DAW, let's make sure our bit rates are consistent throughout each application. First, let's start with Windows. Go ahead and click the Start menu, click on Settings. If you don't have the Settings option available, you could also just search Sound in the Start menu, and then just click on Sound Settings. Now, my audio interface is a Audient Evo 4, so I have chosen my Audient as my main audio device for my system. If I scroll down, I am using a USB microphone because I do not have a studio microphone available, which would use the XLR port. But in this section, just make sure you have your default mic selected. To verify all these settings, we're gonna scroll down even further and click on more sound settings. This should bring up this little sound control panel. Starting off with the playback tab, we're gonna double click or single click and click on properties for our default sound device. Going through each tab, I usually have my level set between 70 and 80. I make sure to disable all my enhancements for both the mic and audio interface. In advanced, this is probably the most important part. Make sure you have the sample rate selected that you're going to use within your DAW and OBS. For me, I always recommend people use 48 kilohertz at 24 bit and also uncheck exclusive mode which allows applications to take exclusive control of this device. Just make sure that this box is unchecked, hit apply and push okay. Next, we're gonna go into the recording tab. If I scroll all the way down, you'll see my Yeti microphone via USB. So I'm going to double click on that. Make sure you click on whatever mic you want to use as your default. In the listen tab, I make sure listen to this device is unchecked. Going to the levels, again, I set this between 70 and 80. For now it's at 80. In advanced, again, make sure the sample rate is the same as you would set it in OBS, your DAW, and the previous playback window that we just set up for our default audio interface. And similarly to the audio interface, uncheck exclusive mode, and I also disable or uncheck audio enhancements. We're pretty much done with the Windows sound setup. Let's dive into OBS and set up those settings as well. Now within OBS, we're gonna go into settings, click on audio, and at the top, make sure your sample rate is the same as we just set it up in Windows. Again, I'm gonna be using 40 kilohertz. I cannot click on it because I am currently recording now, but everything else here is set up the same way you would see within the Windows sound control panel. My default desktop audio device is my Audient Evo 4, and my default microphone is selected as my Blue Yeti USB microphone. Now again, unfortunately, I do not have a microphone that I could set up via XLR cable. Next, we're going to set up our jack audio input that is going to route the output of our DAW into OBS. Within OBS, you're gonna click this plus sign here, then click on ASIO input capture. This option became visible once we installed the OBS ASIO application. So after we click on this, you're going to create a new source and name it whatever you would like. I named mine Jack for the Jack Audio Router. You're gonna push OK here and you'll be presented with this screen. At the top, you're gonna to wanna to click the device dropdown menu and select Jack Router. For the format, you're gonna leave it at stereo and then you're gonna push OK. Now this was just the initial setup of adding the source but you're gonna have to close OBS as well as your DAW, and we're gonna open up QJack CTL first before anything else. So go ahead and close OBS in your DAW, and I'll show you how to configure QJack. To open up QJack, you're gonna click on your start menu, click on the search bar up top, and just type in QJack. Now remember, QJack should have installed during the installation process for Jack 2, which was labeled QJack CTL application under the recommended. So if you do not see QJack CTL, make sure to rerun that installation and have that checked. Another way to find QJack in your start menu is just click on all apps and scroll all the way to the bottom until you hit the Q section. So we'll go ahead and open QJack CTL. 
First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on setup and we'll wanna select our interface, sample rate, and buffer size or frames. If you click the drop down on your interface, go ahead and scroll through and find your USB audio interface. For me, I selected my ASIO Audient USB audio driver which was part of the driver package I installed when I installed the software directly from Audience website. There's going to be a bunch of different interfaces you can choose from in this dropdown list, but I would suggest using your default ASIO drivers that come natively from your manufacturer. Next, we're gonna select the sample rate. And again, we're going to make sure this is set to the same sample rate that we used in our Windows setup, as well as our OBS setup. I'm going to be choosing 48 kilohertz, as I did with the other two. Frames period is essentially your buffer size. For this test, I'll be using 128, which gives around 2.6 milliseconds of latency. If I increase this to 512, you'll see the latency increases to 10 milliseconds, but for now we'll leave it at 128. That's pretty much all you have to do for this setup. Go ahead and click apply and exit out of this window. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just click on start. This will start the Jack server and allow audio to be virtually routed. You'll see in the middle here, it says started and it will gray out the start section, but highlight the stop section, which allows you to stop the Jack server. Now that our Jack server is started, the next thing we're gonna open up is the graph. Now your graph is probably gonna look a little different than mine because you should have OBS and your DAW closed at this time. The only thing you should have open is QJack CTL. But in order for me to record this and show you the setup, you can see that it shows OBS 64 in the middle while routing multiple audio paths into the Jack system. For you, I believe you'll just see this Jack system on the left and right, as well as the MIDI, but there shouldn't be anything in the middle until you open up OBS. Now, if we go back into OBS, we're gonna double click back into the Jack source we set up earlier. And for the OBS channel, select in one, and in two. After opening OBS, you should now be able to see the OBS application visible within the Jack audio graph. Next, let's open up our DAW and configure that for Jack as well. When I opened up Ableton Live, you can now see that Ableton showed up in the virtual graph to allow us to route audio back and forth between Jack and OBS. Now, unfortunately, as I stated earlier, I do not have a pro audio microphone that I can connect via XLR into my audio interface. So this entire Jack system on the left with all the capture routes one through four may not apply to me. I noticed that since I'm only trying to get audio to play back from my DAW and not record anything into it, I can click on this entire jack system here, click on disconnect, and everything will still work just fine. If you are going to be recording into your DAW, such as recording with an instrument or your microphone, you may wanna leave the capture section connected or see which settings work best with the configuration you want to implement. Now going into my DAW, I'm gonna go into the options preferences section. My driver type is going to be ASIO and my audio device is going to be Jack router. Now again, you could see that the sample rate is 48 kilohertz, which stays consistent throughout our entire Windows setup through our Windows audio device settings, our OBS settings, and now our DAW settings. Some audio interfaces do come with control panels. My Evo 4 does come with a control panel. And I'm gonna bring that up to also show you that it's consistent there as well. Now my control panel is called Evo Control. If I go under the setup and I select set sample rate, you could also make sure that it's selected as the same sample rate that you have in all these other applications we've been sending it to. Similarly, you could also check the buffer size to make sure it matches jack audio as well as your DAW. Going back to our DAW, making sure our driver type is set to ASIO and audio device is set to jack router. Let's go ahead and see if we get some playback from our DAW into OBS. Click the X here and click on play, and it doesn't sound like we're getting any routing. If I drag over OBS here, we can see that our jack audio source is not showing any activity, and that's because we need to route it properly within QJack's graph. Going back to QJack, we're gonna set the output of our DAW to the input of OBS. And we're gonna do it for both outs one and two, out one on our DAW going to in one on OBS, and out two in our DAW going to in two on OBS. If we minimize this and bring our DAW back up, press play again, and you'll notice there is now activity 
playing through OBS. One thing I did notice about the Jack application is it does give a little bit of latency, so we're gonna have to create an offset within audio properties. Within OBS, click on one of the gear icons and go to advanced audio properties. Within advanced audio properties, set a plus 50 millisecond sync offset to Jack audio. Now this may change depending on which buffer size you use. If you remember from earlier, I used 128 buffer size during our setup of Jack Audio, which was under the frames per period. If I were to select something like 512 or 256, you may have to increase the sync offset to something like 100 milliseconds rather than 50. I found that 50 milliseconds works pretty good for a few different buffer size values, but you could kind of play around with this and see what works best. Now I'm gonna go over the steps on how to shut everything down and then bring everything back up in a clean manner because I did notice if I didn't shut down things this way in this order, I would sometimes get a glitch. So this is what you're supposed to do. After you're done streaming or creating a video through OBS, first thing you'll wanna do is close down your DAW. So we're gonna go ahead and go to File Quit and you can see my DAW disappeared from this graph here. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is shut down OBS, or in your case, you would stop streaming or stop recording and then quit OBS. Now I have OBS running right now, and if I try to click on stop here, a warning will pop up and say some client audio applications are still active and connected. So if you get this warning, make sure your DAW and OBS are fully closed and they're not hung up in some process in the background. Otherwise, Jack Audio will not be able to close cleanly. Another option that you can take if you don't want to close out of OBS or your DAW before closing out of Jack Audio is in this example, I still have OBS open, but I've already closed my DAW. I can click on OBS in the graph, click on disconnect, and then click stop within the Jack Audio Connection Kit. This will allow me to stop the connection cleanly, and now you could see there's nothing else active on the graph at all. You could exit out of this graph, and then all you need to do is click on quit. It'll tell you that QJack is about to terminate. You push OK, and then you won't have Jack Audio Virtual Driver running in the background any longer. I'm gonna show you guys an example of what happens if I open OBS before QJack to make it known that these steps do matter regarding which application you open first. So right now I have OBS open before QJack, but let's go ahead and open QJack afterwards and see what happens. If I go back to the start menu, click on QJack, open up the graph, click on start on the left side, you can see that OBS does not show up in the middle of our graph here. Now, if I were to close this all down, click on stop, quit Jack Audio, stop my recording, quit OBS, and then open QJack, OBS will pop up just fine. Please make sure the first thing you open before streaming or opening your DAW, that QJack gets prioritized for which applications you open first. Again, Jack Audio will be the first thing you open, click on start, make sure it's actually started, then you can open up OBS and then your DAW. If we click on the graph here, we can see that OBS shows up just fine. Sorry guys if this video was a little confusing. Again, I will try to test everything with a normal microphone into an XLR port, but I hope for now this will help you in the meantime. If you have any questions or need help on how to set everything up, please join my Discord as that is the fastest way to get in contact with me. Thanks everyone.